joined us. Uh, it is still news and views as we continue from now right until 10 a.m. I am in Aitwadi. I'm standing in for Julie Ali this morning, who is uh, recovering from that unfortunate uh, accident that she had. Uh, and we still continue uh, praying for your well-being, Julie. We trust and hope that uh, all will go well with you and you'll be up and running very, very soon. Well, uh, as we also uh, welcome our listeners and, and viewers at One Nation 88.9 FM and stay in the company of our Salam Media listeners, looking at the next 45 minutes or so, uh, we will be focusing on car powership and uh, to understand why uh, this controversial deal is not suitable to South Africa. And uh, we have learned that uh, car powership is not welcome in the Saldana port. Now, shortly, we will be talking with Liz McDade, strategic lead at the Green Connection. Uh, we also will be focusing this morning on the student strikes. And uh, Koresha Ismail Suleiman uh, uh, has written uh, about uh, the student activists and uh, some of the, uh, the, the critical challenges uh, that students and young people generally have faced. Because year after year, we see these protests that are taking place. and. Uh, Fingers need to be pointed at the government as well. And it's sad that the anger of uh, these uh, protests are taken out on the wrong people sometimes, on businesses, on people that are nearby, as we have seen with the Nahawu protests as well, where your anger is and who are the victims of uh, these protests, when, especially when they get ugly. And uh, later on, we will be talking with uh, someone out of Fortsburg this morning, uh, residents have been without water for more than eight weeks. Now, this is uh, the level of uh, service non-delivery in uh, this country. But right now, we're going across to be joined by the Green Connections, and we're talking with Liz McDade. Liz, good morning to you, and uh, welcome to the show. Good morning, and uh, good morning to all your listeners. Liz, uh, the car powership deal we know has been riddled with a lot of uh, controversy, a lot of confusion, and uh, more importantly, whether it is viable in the South African context. Now, looking at the Green Connection and uh, your organization has made it very, very clear that they are not welcome in Saldana Port. What are the issues? So, in this case, we just have to maybe go back a couple of steps. But um, as you say, there's been much controversy around the, these powerships uh, the, as a proposal to supposedly um, help us in our um, ESCOM crisis, load shedding crisis. Um, so one of the issues was that they were going to be there for 20 years. Uh, um, and the other issue that we don't actually know how much they're going to cost because that information was not revealed. Um, but we were told that it's linked potentially to the gas price internationally, which of course has gone up with the Ukraine war, and it was also linked to the dollar rand exchange. And you can imagine, you know, if we had signed these things a couple, three years ago and where we were now, we'd be seeing even more uh, expensive power. So is it useful for South Africa? We don't believe so. Um, but coming back to Soldana, one of the issues that any big development has to go through is an environmental impact assessment. And in many cases, for many projects, the only time people get to comment on something that's happening in the area is through such an EIA process. And this is, by law, supposed to be run by an independent consultant who is paid by the developer, but is supposed to then, by law, put forward any information to the decision maker, which would be the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environment, um, even if that information is not in favor of the project. And what happened last year, we had a first round of that environmental impact assessment at three ports. And um, in the end, the Department of Forestry, Fisheries, and Environment refused all three. They then appealed, and Barbara, Minister Barbara Creasy, then referred them back to go and redo their homework. 
So that keeps us up to date. And then what happened is obviously one of the aspects of public participation is so Ghana, the number of small scale fishers and their families who are dependent on the ocean for their livelihood. And they contended and were burned that car power, the ship, you know, moored there for 20 years would have an impact on their fishing with the hot water that was going to be pouring into the harbor, potential impact on juvenile fish, um, the reef that would protect them, and various other issues. So yes. the obvious thing was then, sorry to be so long, but to get to the point quickly, was that what we discovered was that there was a meeting held that was labeled small-scale fishes, but there were no small-scale fishes. And so we pointed this out to the, and that and yet through the report, this 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 workshop report was was um, used to to say that this is the concerns of the fishes, but the fishes have not been consulted. So this was the form of the complaint, and this has led to the suspension of the of that uh, process until down the right now, while the department investigates. Liz, uh, what about these uh, allegations uh, saying that uh, the Green Connection uh, has used the views of commercial fishing companies uh, to represent uh, the uh, small, uh, 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 the, the small fishing, or the, or I would say, the small operators, for want of a better term? Uh, what are, what would your your response be to that? Yes, we we not we are not the people that did that. We are the people that have laid the complaint that are saying that the consultant Triple O Four has done exactly that. They have represented the small scale fishers, but they they claimed they were representing small scale fishers' views, but actually they were using commercial and mariculture people. Yes. Now, you know, we've seen government as well, uh, Liz, where on the one hand, we've seen people like Gwede Mantashe, uh, you know, repeatedly talking about car power ship and they should be allowed to proceed with their plans. And the environmental minister is giving a completely different version that they shouldn't uh, disregard, you know, the environmental concerns. So, you know, we're getting, we're getting these mixed signals and mixed messages that are even coming out of uh, one government. Well, it's not it's not too confusing in a sense of as long as one doesn't trump the other. In a sense of it's fine for the Minister of Energy to think that car park could solve our problems, but there are a whole lot of issues around that. But you can't just ignore future generations and you can't ignore the environmental um, issues because otherwise what you'll end up with is a worst scenario. So it's right for the Minister of Environment Affairs to draw the line. And if a project that's proposed by, for example, Eddie Mantashe, can't meet those environmental criteria, in this case, a simple one to consult with people who are affected, then it should fail. Yes, now, a way to from here for yourself and the Green Connection? So the Green Connection is waiting for the outcome of the investigation into the complaint. And from there, we will see what the department does um, and then what they then decide uh, for the for the car power EIA. And we will then decide from there what we do. Well, Liz, uh, we will be watching this space with interest. But for now, we thank you. We appreciate you taking time out and talking to us. Yes, thank you very much. And we will be happy to update people as things unfold. The Green Connections, Liz McDade with us this morning. Uh, we're going to go for a quick break. We come back, we'll be joined by Dr. Croatia Suleiman.